All right, the day has finally come where your CEO walks over to you and says, it's time to put the sales strategy plan together for next year. And you've got to put together a plan. And um, a good way to do that is either in a Google Doc where you explain your plan in written format. That may be how Amazon would do it. Um, or uh, to put it in a Google slide presentation and lay it out page by page in multiple slides to bring clarity to your plan and get approval on the budget required to go hit your goals. And so that is what this sales strategy template is intended for. Um, I, uh, I currently run demand gen at a, at a B2B software company, but I was previously the VP of sales uh, and I did that for five years for a venture backed B2B SaaS company. And I would put together plans very similar to this one, um, which I wanted to make accessible for you. So if you go in the description below, you can access and download this template and customize it. The whole intent with this is to make it easily customizable. All these elements, you can change out this logo with yours. You can change out the information down here. Um, it's all intended to be very modular and customizable. So let's jump into it. Slide number one is a uh, overview of the sales plan. You'll have your nice uh, action oriented title here with a description below. And then you have your key points so that if you did not have time, if your CEO or other executives did not have time to read the rest of the presentation, they would at least understand the key points that they had to that they would, um, they, they could walk away from the presentation knowing. Then um, I would typically get into the objectives and key results. So we've just covered the high level overview, the key takeaways, but this really gets into the, the OKRs. We use objectives and key results. If you want, you can find another OKR template um, on the site where you can actually manage OKRs for your team and keep track of the progress on, uh, of them on a quarterly or monthly basis. Uh, but this slide lays it out nicely so that as the VP of sales, you can clearly, uh, define what your objectives are and then the key results, the quantifiable results, um, to measure that will demonstrate whether you achieve those goals or not. Then what I would often do is go into, so we've, we've defined our goals. Um, now here's how the, uh, the actual team is structured today and, um, and what we will need, um, from a, from a team perspective, here's the current team today and here's the, the expansion required to go hit our goals in the, the training and development. Now I've broken this out into full-time employees, the people that we have today on the team versus in the dotted lines, uh, the folks that we'll need to add. And you can, you know, much of this, as I, as I talk through this, the narrative of the story will often depend on what your executives or CEO needs to understand. Um, this may not be necessary. It may be known and there's no change here. And so you don't need this slide, or maybe this slide's more appropriate later in the deck. Uh, but I'm, I'm trying to give you the building blocks uh, of how you can piece your story together, your plan uh, for how you're going to go hit your, your revenue number this year. Um, this goes into the the market landscape and sort of demonstrates that we've done some analysis here of, uh, of our, of our closed one and closed lost opportunities in the CRM. And when we look at the competitors that were, that are in our marketplace, um, we are winning at a high rate here and down here is a opportunity volume. So high win rate, low win rate, low volume, high volume. Um, and then you place the logos of your competitors in this grid to give a clear understanding of how your product and company is positioned in relation to your competitors. And how is that helpful? Well, understanding that will then help you enable the sales team uh, and even the marketing team um, to, uh, to 
produce the necessary content to win against these competitors, but also position yourself in the company um, when you're on the phone with prospective customers to bring them uh, into your family of customers. Uh, then we go into the ideal customer profile. So the sales team has to be specific on this. This should really be very much aligned with what your marketing team is doing. It can't be done in a silo, which I've often seen in the past, where sales defines their ICP differently than the marketing ICP. So if you're the VP of sales, you've got to work with the VP of marketing to make sure that uh, you're very much aligned on the different characteristics of, uh, of your ideal customer profile. And that will help to make sure that um, you're doing the right things to target them. And then you're, uh, you're doing the right things to convert them. Same goes for the personas. So in B2B sales, um, your ICP is typically a company profile and that has a certain number of characteristics. And then you have personas within that company uh, that you're targeting the economic buyer, the champion, the user or the primary profiles that you're going after and the talk tracks and the collateral that you'll need to support your conversations with them. Um, there are, especially in commercial and enterprise sales, there are many more buyer personas than this. You may, you'll have legal and finance and uh, procurement but um, this keeps it uh, a, sort of a simplified view and the most important personas uh, to go get your deal done. So then uh, now you've, you've clearly defined who you're going after. Uh, the question is gonna be, how are we gonna go after them? And so uh, I've broken this out into outbound sales, inbound sales and account-based marketing, or you could change this to uh, uh, account-based sales actually may do that here just so it's uh, it's more clear and aligned with sales versus the marketing organization. Um, uh, this, you know, if it's just one of these that you're focused on, do one. If it's two, great. If it's all three, include all three. It, it's going to be highly dependent on what your organization looks like. All right, moving along. Um, next is... Um, I find it helpful to present a concept of the, the journey, the sales journey that we are guiding our, our customer through. Um, this is, this is very company centric. So this is how, you know, we define marketing qualified leads, SQLs, close ones. Like this is how we move a customer through. Keep in mind their buying journey is different and they go through, uh, a journey of in, uh, consuming content and information that doesn't necessarily fit squarely in our process, but we have to have a process so that we can consistently deliver a customer experience and we can measure quantifiably how we, we are doing at each one of these steps. And so this defines the different steps in the process, the stakeholders on our side, the team members that will participate, and then um, uh, the, the steps in between that enable the advancement of leads through the sales process. So I, f I find it very important to, um, to, to clearly define this so that um, you can align the stakeholders and resources internally at your company. Next up is so much of what will, I will help you on the sales side. Uh, hit your plan is making sure that your customers are successfully onboarded and they're retained well and they are upsold over time. And so um, I think this is a, a great opportunity to work collaboratively with your customer success manager or your, your head of customer success um, to make sure that these key steps are in place to bring them through uh, your uh, your funnel or your flywheel or your hourglass, whatever the flavor of the day of the imagery that um, the thought leaders are using to describe the uh, the journey of our customers. But this is the, the key component post-sale. 
Okay, then I, I like to include a, a slide just on sales and marketing alignment that clearly defines like this is what marketing is going to be focused on. This is what sales is going to be focused on, the expectations of sales and marketing, and then how we are going to have clear communication between these two departments. Um, this slide outlines the tech stack, the technology that will enable you to be successful and achieve your plan. And so these are the different components, uh, the sort of layers of the tech stack that, um, that we use at our company. Um, it's been different for the different tech companies that I've worked at, but generally the, the structure is consistent. It's just the, uh, the vendors that you're using for these different categories. And so feel free to add or remove any of these later layers or replace them uh, based on how you uh, think about your business. Then we get into the resource allocation. So there's ultimately going to be an ask for how much money this is going to cost. And this ultimately um, impacts your customer acquisition cost. Uh, and so I've laid this out in a sort of a simple, easy to understand. This is what the total budget is, whatever your period of time is. And this is how it's broken up between personnel, tech, and um, training development or support and then clearly describes um, uh, how it's allocated here and the expected ROI uh, of the sales budget. There are many different ways you could lay this information out, uh, but I, I do include, if you, if you choose to do it this way, I do include a link to this chart here so that you can, you can just um, put in your numbers and then update this chart. Then uh, ultimately, you know, you're doing all this work, you've laid out this clear plan, you've got to have a view on how many uh, closed one deals it's going to produce and the amount of revenue that's going to come from it. And so, boy, wouldn't it be nice if our, if our plans always looked like this up and to the right? It's certainly um, always how we, we present a plan. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. But um, the, this at least outlines what we believe, what we would need from a lead perspective, and then based on our expected conversion rates, how many new customers, close one customers we would we would bring in on a monthly basis, and then the new revenue as a result of that. And again, uh, this chart here is accessible to you in the upper right hand corner. Just make a copy of the chart, plug in your numbers or your forecast. Um, you can also do this from the sales forecast template, which goes into very, very granular detail on, um, on headcount that you'll need and lead flow and conversion rates. Um, and, and then you can plug in the output into a chart like this. Okay. Uh, getting down into the sort of key activities on a quarterly basis. So you've set the sort of macro plan and strategy. Now you've got to chunk it down into uh, to quarterly goals and activities. And so this could give you a view. And if it's not, um, if you're putting together a plan for a shorter period of time, maybe it's just monthly or for a particular quarter, then instead of four quarters, maybe this is for the plan for the quarter. And so then each of these becomes month one, two, and three of that quarter. And then lastly, the next step. So if you can just summarize uh, what you said, and then the key next steps to go action this plan. That is the full sales strategy template. I hope you're able to, in the description below, I'll include a link to this. I hope you're able to take advantage of it and it's helpful for you just to accelerate the, your thinking on what your sales strategy could be to go hit your number and then help um, shorten the amount of time it takes for you to actually go build out a plan like this. And again, I've tried to make this as modular as possible. You can just go into these and click them um, edit the text, move, move the, uh, the cells around, update these charts. So, uh, check out the link in the description below to the sales strategy template. Again, hope this is helpful and I will see you on the next one.